video in its entirety is linked in the description, it's on the channel. But this video is about how to make a video like that, an automotive video, specifically if you're running a lean operation. In other words, you're a one-man band and you have no money. I've been shooting these lean videos for a while now, and in this video, I'll share some of the lessons I've learned along the way just to increase my chance of success. Fujifilm asked me if I wanted to try out the new GFX100 Mark II. Now this is their flagship medium format camera and it's, now it's got all these like, video features. So I was obviously stoked to try it out. And so then I'm like, okay, well now I need a story. Everything is more complicated and will take longer than I think. So the goal is to keep things simple. Coincidentally, Peter from Flasics Classics had very recently finished building the Safari 911. It looks wild for this video. The idea is very simple. Take the car, this off-road Porsche, take it from nature to the city for a photo shoot. Ryan from Flat 6 is kind of more of an outdoorsman and Peter's very much a city guy. The car could start with Ryan in nature, with fire ripping through dirt and stuff, and he hands it off to Peter, it's filthy, then he takes it, cleans it up, and then drives it to the photo shoot, and then we shoot the car. That was the story. And then flesh it out a little bit. You know, like what are the scenes? The storyboarding is what helps with that the most. Just do a storyboard, even if you can't draw, and do it on paper. Why paper? Well, A, because when you're on a screen, if you're, let's say, using an iPad and a pen, you can kind of infinitely erase and change and modify. Then you get like caught up in the little details of the picture when that's not the point. The point of the storyboard, at least for me, is just to get the essence of like, what is that scene? What is the general composition? What is roughly? And sometimes, honestly, the drawing is so bad that other people couldn't even tell what's going on in that frame. But I know what it is. You know, the whole point of it is just to like get your ideas on paper. And also, a paper doesn't have a Wi-Fi connection, so there isn't the sort of the urge to get distracted and go on social media and find out what's going on with the election or whatever. If you set some limitations early, kind of frees your mind up to then think about the other things, like storytelling. So in this case, one of the things I wanted to try, for no real reason, just other than that I wanted to try it, was to try to shoot almost every single shot on a tripod. And then two is the lenses. I mean, part of that was a limitation of what Fuji was sending me. So they were gonna send me the 55, and then I also requested the 32 to 64. Counterintuitively, when you've planned things out, it allows you to be actually more free and more flexible on the day of. Which takes me on to the next one, which is something will go wrong every time. Every single time. Uh, and don't get mad. I mean, things went wrong multiple times on this shoot. I had a bunch more shots that I wanted to get in the, the nature shots of the car driving, but then... <laughs> Abrupt ending. Yes, yes, it is what it is. Could you explain to me what just happened, sir? <laughs> I think he should explain what just happened. He will in a court of law. The wow. shoot has been cut short, so we're gonna go build a fire. Says who? Uh, well... Yeah. Walkie-talkies are key. Uh, always bring them, even if it's not a car shoot, but especially car shoots, because you need to communicate with the driver and you don't want to just be relying on hand gesture. There's a really cheap set that I got on Amazon. We use those on every shoot and they've worked out pretty decent. I'll leave a link in the description. It's like 50 bucks for four units and they work just fine. Are we doing a wash today? No, probably not. What do you mean? So you can just leave it like this? Yeah. yeah. But when are we gonna do it? When uh, can you leave it like this for a while? Well, I was hoping you could do something tomorrow. But then we we, we need Ryan again. Tomorrow? Because he has to hand you the car. Uh, the shoot looks like it was you know shot in a day. Obviously, it wasn't shot in a day. It was winter days. We have short days. It takes like two uh, two and a half hours to just get to that nature spot where we film the car. So it was actually shot over three days. And if you include re recording some audio, it was four days that it took to shoot this video. One, two, three, and then head down. Okay, okay. to check the time. One, two, three. So the first day was all the nature stuff, the campfire and driving around in the woods, ripping it around. I want somewhere we're the same speed. We need some of that. Okay, there's like not gonna be any drifting though. That's fine. The second day was the handoff from of the car from Ryan to Peter and then driving through the city daytime and also the car wash. And then finally on the third day, it was the night clean car driving through the city at night and then the photo shoot itself. And on the fourth day, I got together with Peter. We just went out and recorded just some just audio of the car. It's always a good idea when you're shooting cars to go get some sort of dedicated audio that you can splice in there with your footage. I've noticed in a lot of my shoots is every shoot I go in with like a shot that I want to get. You know, no rhyme or reason, but like the whole thing builds around this one thing. I knew I wanted that kind of car wash. I didn't want it where you drive through. I didn't want it where the guy comes and cleans your car. I wanted the one where you get the spray and you spray down your car. I don't know, maybe because I watched The Killer. 
And there's that scene where he like sprays down his van. I don't know, maybe it's because of that. So those two things I just knew I wanted to do. And then I, you know, kind of built everything else around it. Video shoot's done. We're going to the photo shoot now. 11 o'clock, super cold. Ready to just get this thing done because we're all tired and hungry and whatever. We set everything up and the security guard shows up and says, you gotta get the hell out of here. So Chris and Peter bought me some time and they just sort of talked this guy up while I was trying to like rush a quick shoot. Originally, I'd planned to light paint the car. That's how I was gonna light it and document that whole process. But with this guy telling us to get out of there, he's like, yeah, you got like 10 minutes. I was like, okay, well, I gotta move quick. And luckily I had brought my strobe light in the car. GFX is on a tripod, the remote trigger, and I've got the strobe on a light stand. Now, you gotta have a light light stand. By light, I mean not heavy. You can't have a C stand for this. Then you use the Fujifilm X app to remotely trigger the camera and also preview the last frame that I just shot. Because the idea with this kind of strobe photography is the camera's stationary, so you can get a bunch of different exposures with the strobe in different positions, so you can light the car in different ways, and then merge selective parts of your different exposures for the final image in Photoshop. So you open up the legs, the two two legs on my hips, kind of like this, and I'm holding this with the strobe off the end, and then I've got this in my other hand, and so I'm walking around the car, and I will take an exposure, and see if it looks good, and all right, and then move to another position, do another one, and so on and so forth. Take care, man. Yeah, you too. Like a rally car? <laughs> yeah. Pretty friggin' So I've started a little print shop. So these photos from this shoot, the final photos that we shot on the GFX are available for sale. So you can buy prints, you can buy canvas, you can frame different sizes. So check out the print shop. And it's not just this car, there's other flat six builds, maybe two other cars that are not flat six. There's like a new GT3 RS. But yeah, check out the print shop to help support the channel. It's also cool stuff to put up on your wall. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for joining me.